Let's go to the main menu and click Tools. Then in the search box, type in Notes. From the menu below, locate Content and then click Notes from the menu. Now let's go ahead and drag the border at the right all the way to the far right so we have more room. Now at first blush, the Notes feature can overwhelm you. But once you understand a simple metaphor, I think it's going to make Notes a whole lot easier. The metaphor is a spiral notebook. This is probably the best way to understand how Notes work. A spiral notebook has a cover. A spiral notebook then has individual pages. And then there's the content on those individual pages. Now before we show you how to create this note, let's walk you through the interface so that you're not overwhelmed by all the information that's thrown at you. So let's begin first at the top left. We have the hamburger menu, that is the three vertical lines right here, and that controls the information down here. So if we click it once, that will disappear. If we click it again, that will bring it out. So if you don't see this menu, just click the hamburger menu. When you want to search the contents of your notes, click here in the search box and type in the word or phrase you're looking for. To clear out your search, just delete the information or click the X at the far right. You can share a note. We'll come back to that feature later. Now over at the right, you'll see a big blue button. And when you click this button, that creates a new note. We now can enter information for this new note. If you click the drop down triangle, you can see you can also do a new note that way as well. And the stoplight menu at the far right, if you click that, we have a basic menu that will allow you to print, export, etc. Let's delete this note we just created by clicking the three dots right here for the note and then click delete note. Now let's go over to the far left and explore this menu and explain what's going on. All right, so first over at the left, you have the filter icon. That's right here and the notebook icon. Just above that tells you how many notes you have. Now the filter icon is currently selected. It kind of has a white background and we can see the various filters below. There's three basic types of notes at the time this video was made. There's notes that are created when you highlight. There's actually physical notes. And then there's responses. This, this is usually created to notes that are created through workflows and guides. Now resource, these are where the notes are connected to. So all my notes in my ESV are right here. Then we have notes associated with books of the Bible. So all the notes that are connected to Genesis are listed here. Then we have reference. So if you're making a note and it references a particular location of a book, we're going to see that there. And then there's tags. These are specific words and phrases you can add or are added to help you search for a note beyond just this simple search at the top. So for example, if I wanted to search for Colwell's rule, I have this tag and now I can search for that. Some of your notes are going to be associated with notebooks. We'll explain that in a little bit and that's listed here. Now, most notes you create, you'll be the author, but you may end up downloading some of the free notes available at the Logos document site, and so you may see other authors here. Then we have Anchor, which is basically helping you understand where the note is anchored to or connected to. This may be a text, maybe a Bible reference, a head word, etc. You can see workflow and guide there listed as well. Now, if the head word is unique, like Greek, English, or Hebrew, it's going to be noted here. Now, the guides are mentioned here, which is pretty helpful. And then we have the modification when the note has been changed. We have a way of filtering by recent, most recent. And we also have when the note was created. There is a trash button down below. Be careful when you click that. That will delete your note. Now, you'll notice there's a magnifying glass right here, and that allows you to search these different filters. So if I click on the magnifying glass, and let's say I type in highlights, you can see that now highlights and miscellaneous highlights have now appeared. So this is a way of searching those filters and making the list a little bit smaller. Now to the right of the filter icon is the notebook icon. Let's go ahead and click on that. And this is where the metaphor of a spiral notebook comes into play. So let's actually create a notebook with some pieces of paper and some content on that paper. All right, so the first step we've already done, and that's to click the notebooks icon. Next, you'll see the plus inside a circle. This will create a new notebook. So let's go ahead and click that. Right away, you'll see Untitled Notebook. Let's call this the Training Notebook with a number one after it. Now, as soon as you press Enter, 
Logos will sort all your notes alphabetically. That's why we don't see it at the top of the list. Now, if you only have a handful of notes, you can scroll down and find it. That's pretty easy. Or use the magnifying glass just to write it a plus. And if we click that and we type in training notebook one, we can find our note pretty quickly. Now that we found our note, let's go ahead and click that note to select it. All right, so we have a notebook, but we don't have any pages and we don't have any content. And that brings us to the middle column. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click new note. You'll now see that the middle column has this information. Now it happens to be blue with this green X because that's the last setting I've used. That is controlled right over here. So if we were to get rid of this X by clicking it, we could say no icon. And if we were to click the A, we could change it from blue foreground to no foreground. And now it's just gonna be a plain white note. All right, so our notebook is at the left, our piece of paper is in the middle, and the content that goes on our paper is at the right. Notice too that the notebook has been identified right here. That's to let us know that we're creating a note for our notebook. I'm gonna type in read my note. All right. Notice a couple things. First, we can see the content here and we have access to all this formatting possibility. So fonts, italic, highlighting, bolding, justifying. We also can insert images as well. Now I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna continue on the next line with some more information. I'm gonna type in more info. Now I want you to notice that the piece of paper over here is keeping track of these first couple lines. I'm gonna to go to the third line, and then I'll type in fourth line. You can now see the first three lines of information. Now, here's a little tip. If you're gonna create notes, then you definitely wanna label the content of your note with that first line. So for example, if this note's gonna be about Noah's Ark, I'm gonna delete all this. I'm gonna type in Noah's Ark. Then press enter. Maybe I'll have a subtitle, that's okay too, or I'll just simply press enter, and now I'll put in let's say Genesis six and press enter. By using the first line as a title, it's a visual help to let you know the content of the note. And that's very useful. Notice that when we typed in a verse and press enter, that Logos converts the Bible cross reference into a link to that passage. I love this feature. So if we press enter and type in John three colon 16 minus 20 space, not a return, Logos will convert that cross-reference as well. So that's a real handy feature and will save you time. There's no point typing in or copying and pasting the whole passage. Just put in the cross-reference and you are good to go. Now applying formatting is pretty straightforward. You just simply select the text and then you choose from the menu at the top. I'm just gonna simply do bold and now you can see my bold is completed. Now over at the far right, there's some additional options. The check means that the note has been saved. The double arrow at an angle is pretty handy. Let me click it to show you what happens. Notice that the two panels at the left, that is the notebook panel and the note panel, have now disappeared, giving me more room to type. If I click that double arrow at a diagonal, you can see the two panels have returned. If we click the three dots, we have several options. We can close this note. We can show the full anchor text. We can send it to a sermon document, we can add an anchor, and we can delete this note. Let's click add anchor so I can explain how this works. Now currently we don't have any books open, so let's do that. I'm gonna click on my shortcut to my preferred Bible right here in New American Standard. And I'm gonna left click on the tab and just drag it to the right. So we have our Bible at our right, and we have our notebook at the left. Now I'm gonna click that three dot menu again by the notes, and I'm gonna choose add anchor. Now let's make a little more room to see what's going on here. So as you can see, Logos is smart enough to remember the last book I clicked on, in this case, the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5.1. So it shows active reference. And if I click done, now 1 Thessalonians 5.1 has been added to my note and notice that went above my title. So if you wanna anchor a note to a specific place in a book, this is the way you do it. Navigate to that book location, then click the three dots and click add anchor. Should you need to remove the anchor, simply float your mouse and click the X and that will remove the anchor. 
Now, my personal recommendation is if you're working with Bible passages, then definitely put the anchor in there. That makes it easier for Logos to find the passage. Now, down below, we have tags. So if we were to type in Noah and press enter, we now have Noah as a tag. If you type in two words, Noah's Ark, two words with a space in it, and notice a menu popped up, we could click that. Now Noah's Ark is a complete tag. If you click the Add Label button to the right, this allows you to associate a label with it. So we could say Noah is our label, and now we have a label associated with our note as well. Now we can use our label feature to add additional subcategories. So for example, we could put in the arc, select it from the menu, and we could then put some value in there. I don't have a value, so I'm just gonna click done. As you can see, Logos has integrated notes into quite a few features in the Logos program. Now let's close our note and show you how to find your notes. So I'm gonna click on all, and now I'm back to the notes. Notice that our note is still at the right, and that's because our most recent note is listed here, and that's because we're sorting by date modified. So if you make a new note and you can't find it, click up here, choose date created or date modified. Now over at the left, we have another icon. Let's go ahead and click that. And you can see we have a default view, a compact view, and a full preview. Let's click compact. Now you can see that we have a much different view to note. We just have the basic information. Let's click our menu and choose full preview. Now in full preview mode, you're seeing pretty much the whole note. Very rarely have I used this, so I'm going to click Done. I think the best view is the default view. You can see the first couple of lines of information for your note, and you're good to go. Now, let's say we want to find this note. So let's type in Noah. Now, every note that has Noah mentioned in it is going to be listed here, and of course, our most recent is listed there at the top. Now, I'm going to click on the X to get rid of this search criteria for the notebook. Now, we can begin searching for other books. Now that we've done a basic overview of the note file, let's show you some additional features. I'm going to go over to the right in my Bible. I'm going to type in Genesis 6, since that is the anchor that we created. Now let's go create that anchor again. So I'm going to click the three dots and click Add Anchor. Then I'm going to click Done. Now you notice you don't see any note icon right now. This can happen, and that's because my visual filters for notes is turned off. So I'm going to click on the three dots in the shape of a pyramid. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to check the box, Notes and Highlights. I'm going to expand Notes and Highlights, and what I'm looking for is my notebook. So I'm going to scroll down and look for Training Notebook. There's Training Notebook, and it is selected. Now, the reason we're not seeing our note now is because we have set some criteria up earlier that we didn't want any visuals. You may want some notes to be visible and some notes to be invisible. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to change the icon to a green. Now we can see our note. I'm going to click the next icon, and I'm going to want the text to be highlighted. So I'm going to use icon. Now you can see it's a huge difference in impact, especially when I'm using a whole chapter for an anchor. So I'm going to turn off that highlight and just do none. So now I have a visual cue to let me know that I have a note positioned at this location. So what are some other uses for notes? Let's go to the library and open up a lexicon. I'm going to type in DBL for Dictionary of Biblical Languages, and I'm going to choose the Hebrew lexicon. Okay, we've opened up the DBL, and we're in the location of Aaron. Now, this is really important to understand how powerful the note features can be. We have a lot of information here. We have the GK numbering system. We have the Hebrew lemma. We have transliteration and a whole bunch of other things. Let's go ahead and right-click on the Hebrew word. Notice the right-click menu opens, and we have a selection of the Hebrew word. We have a reference to the DBL Hebrew location. We have a reference to the Hebrew GK numbering system. We have a reference to the Strong's numbering system, the TWOT numbering system, and the headword. Let's go ahead and choose headword. Now, notice at the right, we have add a note, and it kept track of our most recent notebook. So if we wanted to add a note to our notebook and keep everything together, Logos automates it. So I'm going to click on training notebook one. Now I'm going to move my mouse to make this window a little more easier to read. So you can see that the notebook we had open where we had our Noah's Ark note, now we've got a anchor right back to this spot. In fact, if we click that, it'll take us to that location. I'm going to click on the X to close this window. I'm going to click on my anchor. 
And you can see it opened up right to the spot where the note was. So this connection is really important when you're creating notes from books because you can link back to that exact spot in the book. Now I'm going to right click this again and this time I'm going to choose reference Hebrew GK195. We'll click that. Notice at the right we have add a note. Now if we just chose add a note it would literally create a new note but it wouldn't be connected to our notebook. So let's go to our training notebook. There it is. I'm going to click on the X to close the DBL Hebrew. We'll click on Hebrew GK and there it goes. It takes us back to the DBL Hebrew. So be aware of this. Now notice we're not seeing the note highlight. So we need to click on the three dots in the shape of a pyramid. Click the menu and look at this. Notes and highlights has been disabled. Let's go ahead and check that. And now we can see there's actually several notes here. And if you float your mouse over it, we can see the contents of the notes. Turns out the first two, there's really no data there. But if we float over to the third note, it says this is strong numbers. 50 Philippians. So if I click on that note, it opens up the note, and now we can see what's going on. These note icons can link you back to the specific note to help you find it. All right, before we close up this video, I think it's important to note to talk briefly about note strategies. We've already talked about the concept of a notebook. We've already shared with you the metaphor of a spiral notebook. So that helps you understand that whenever you create a note, you should always create a notebook, and that notebook is going to represent all the information that you want to store. So make sure notebooks are organized by, let's say, a category or a topic or a subject or maybe a passage. And then all the notes and data you collect will go inside that individual notebook. Second, we talked about it with the highlighting toolbar earlier. But we also create a notebook for our highlights so that our highlights would all be stored in a particular notebook named after the palette. Now, the big question is, should you invest in the time of putting your notes inside Logos? Now, my personal opinion is this. Notes are great and think of them as a post-it note. They're a little piece of information that you want to hold on to, but if you lost it, it wouldn't be a big deal. That's kind of the way I use notes. However, you may want to use notes more thoroughly. So there's really a couple strategies for using notes. One is to treat the notes like post-it notes. In other words, you use them infrequently. The information you put on there is helpful for the moment. You may or may not need in the future. That's the post-it note approach. The second approach is that you truly make this the place where you store all your information. If you go down that route, keep in mind that Logos could change the note feature in the future and that may make it difficult to find or organize your notes. Now, one way around that is the export feature in notes. So I'm going to click the three dots here at the top, and you notice I can print and export. So now I can take all my notes, and I can export them into a Microsoft Word or other document. So be aware that you can export your notes, and that's pretty handy. Last strategy is I do not recommend having random notes. You should always create a notebook, and then put your notes in that specific notebook. Now, there's a couple other features I haven't shown yet. I want to save those for last. So let me go ahead and click the X to kind of close all these windows. And let me expand it to one note window. As I mentioned before, this middle column represents pages in a notebook. Turns out you can move and manipulate these pages. For example, if you left click on the note, you can drag that into any of the notebooks at the left. So when I float that over the 00 iPad and release it, my Noah's Ark note is in there. So we can drag and drop one note. Now I'm going to click up here on the All so I can reset my notes. You can also select more than one note. So if I click on the first note, hold down the Shift button, and then click on the last note, all the notes from the first to the last and the intervening notes have been selected. I can then left-click and drag this over. Notice the 00 iPad label appears. I release it. If I click on 00 iPad, the notes have increased to 6, and all my notes are there. Now let's click the filter to start over again. So if your notes do get out of control, this drag and drop feature makes it easier to reorganize your notes. Now let's go to the bottom left and click trash. You can now see that you have trash notes and trash notebooks. So Logos is keeping track of your deleted notes, and if you want to restore them, just select the note. Notice at the bottom, you have two options, permanently delete and undelete. 
Permanently delete will completely remove the note and then undelete will restore it. I'm going to click undelete. Now to get out of the trash mode, go to the top right, click done. And now we have our note restored. You can bring images into your note files now. I'm going to click the insert media icon located here. Notice the three tabs, your media, faith lifestock, and unsplash. So there's my rule of engagement. I'm going to check that box and click insert. Logos will insert the image into my note file. Let's click insert media once again. Let's click on faith life stock. So Logos gives us some images that may be helpful. So take advantage of those. You can also use the search box. So I'm going to type in water and anything related to water will appear there. And then there is unsplash. Let's click that. And this gives us access to more images. So I'm going to type in building and there's a building. I'm going to check the box and I'm going to insert that inside my note. Now, if you want to share your note with someone else, click the share button at the top right. Notice I have to be in a note to share the note. And when I click share, Logos gives me the share option. Let's go ahead and click done. As you can see, Logos has made notes a little more complicated, but also made it more powerful. Let's go ahead and click on the X to close this window. Now, one other item I wanted to show you. Let's go ahead and click on the search panel. I'm going to choose basic from the menu, all text. I'm going to click all resources. I'm going to choose documents and let's type in Noah and press enter. Let's expand your documents. And then notice that notes is our search results. If you're not seeing the same search results, that's because I have mine selected by type. Now notice that when you run a search after creating a new note, there is some indexing going on. So your search results may change or vary while you're waiting for Logos to kind of catch its breath here. But let's click and expand notes. If you recall, we named our notebook Training Notebook 1. And if we click and expand that, we should be able to see Noah's Ark mentioned. So not only can you search within the notes, but if you go to the basic search engine, you can search your note file there as well. Let's click the X to close this window.